Barry, what are you doing? Our kids are gonna wanna see this. Wanting to better life for his imprisoned father and deceased mother, the Flash goes back in time and changes history with disastrous consequences. The Flash is one of the most entertaining superhero films in recent years with pleasing callbacks to past DC properties, but it's also a film that struggles to stand under its own weight, with grand ideas and concepts it fails to deliver on. The result is a fun film that grows progressively more frustrating and unfulfilling as it approaches its finish line. Ezra Miller is likeable and quirky in the lead role, playing two distinct versions of Barry Allen. They manage to make both initially annoying characters somewhat endearing, and there's great character progression throughout the film with both versions cleverly discovering who they are and what they are capable of. It's a shame that so much of the film is mired in Ezra's personal controversy, but if you can overlook that, Ezra does a good job here. The return of Michael Keaton as Batman is perhaps the biggest draw of the film. In this regard, The Flash doesn't disappoint. Keaton is charismatic and brooding, and he showcases more agility than ever before as Batman. In many ways, he's a wise mentor figure to The Flash, offering guidance relating to someone who has dedicated their life to events of the past. They make for an interesting duo, with Keaton's moments of experience stealing the show. Keaton is not the only Batman in the film though. Ben Affleck returns in a small but pivotal role, giving us one last demonstration of his abilities in the role. It serves as a more of an appreciation of his Batman rather than a send-off meaning if this is his final outing, some fans may desire more from this showing. Sasha Kale is the DCEU version of Supergirl. She looks the part and does a great job at displaying her motivations, feelings and powers. Sadly, she doesn't get to say or do much, and she's more of a plot device than a fully formed character. The Flash is full of characters, so only so many of them can have their moments. Sasha is disappointingly one of those who gets minimised. Similarly, Michael Shannon is back as Zod, but isn't given anything to do other than repeat his lines and scenes from Man of Steel. It's good to see him, but he's again a plot device to fuel some action scenes and conflicts, rather than a fully detailed character. The Flash does excel as an action film. The Batman scenes are particularly well choreographed even if they lack explanation concerning how a 70 year old man can move like Keaton's Batman does. The film does a great job at showing the array of powers and abilities held by the Flash beyond his super speed as well. The weakest element of the film is the CGI and special effects. While some of these are impressive and convincing, as well as stylish and colourful, a large sum of the CGI is awful. From characters to environments, many of the non-existent locations and people look terrible. Animations are poor, facial reconstruction is passable, and CGI characters resemble cartoons rather than living, breathing beings. For a film of this scale and scope, the CGI is some of the worst I've ever seen. The other big weakness of the film is the final act. At a certain point in the film, the flash goes from being good and fun to being underwhelming and sloppy. The final act fails to provide satisfying resolution for many of the story and character arcs, and it attempts to cram in too many nods, references and cameos with no purpose beyond their initial appearance. It's still a little fun, but completely without purpose or necessity. Additionally, some viewers might wonder how this film sets up the new DCU. This is another disappointing part of the film. It leaves more questions than answers in this regard, and I'm not convinced that many of the results of this film will be addressed in a clear way going forward. The Flash is very enjoyable, and for the most part, it's a good superhero film. Thanks to great editing and direction, it moves along at a brisk pace, never slowing or boring. Michael Keaton gets a very welcome return as Batman, and the controversial Ezra Miller proves they're talented. Sadly, the film stumbles towards the end, struggling to top what came before it, and it leaves more questions than answers, as well as frustration over satisfaction.